invisible. I'm invisible. You're invisible? Why are you invisible? Because I'm a G H O S T. Yes, he had quite a sense of humour. He also used to swear a lot as well. I've never been able to forget that voice. He called himself many names, but mostly Bill or Fred. I still listen to the 180 hours of tapes I recorded during the investigation. This voice is coming from an 11-year-old girl. Well, Pat's guy, Pat, you've got something to say to them. Yeah. I'd like to know how you make this noise without bashing Janet's vocal cords to pieces. If I do it for half a minute, I get a sore throat. Goose chase is here. And we found that on analysis, the voice was not made by the larynx, the voice box, but by the false vocal fold, which is above the larynx. And you only use that when you lose your voice and you talk like that. Well, if you talk like that for more than a couple of minutes, you start getting a sore throat. Talk like that for five minutes or so, and you're going to start doing damage to your throat. And yet this voice used to speak up to three hours at a time. Not continuously, of course, but up to three hours at a time without the girl showing any distress at all. Absolutely remarkable. The voice was just part of it. The girl levitated, going from horizontal to vertical in a sixth of a second. Furniture was thrown around the rooms. The house was swarming with journalists. But after four days, they were baffled and frightened and called my team for help. A policewoman gave a sworn affidavit of the extraordinary activity she witnessed. Even the ghost chipped in. The death certificate confirmed the truth of what the ghost was saying. Many objects materialized out of thin air. Spoons were bent. Fires broke out spontaneously in the impoverished family's home. The family had to endure practically every known phenomena in a poltergeist case. They were traumatized. They didn't benefit financially and were ostracized by many of their local community. The Enfield poltergeist menaced that family for 18 months. It nearly destroyed their lives. I'm going back to see them for the first time in 20 years. Janet, the girl at the center of it all, prefers to remain anonymous. But I spoke to her mother and sister. Well, here I am at this uh, famous house uh, in Enfield. And uh, here you see Margaret and her mother, who were very, very involved in this case. Do you remember the day I first came? Yes, I remember, yeah, Mr. Gross. Remember and, 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 Mr. and you Gross. was on the case ever since then, yeah. yes. onwards. And you saw everything mm -hmm. and took note and explained to us you remember when the reporters and journalists were here? How did they carry on? I could see the fear in some of their faces also, and they probably could sense that we was dead scared and wanted to run out any minute. I know I did. Yeah. I My sister did, I know that. I remember one of them came in and he explained to me that I'd got a poltergeist in the house. And, and I said, what on earth's that? And I nearly didn't... fainted when he told me. I didn't even know what it was. In fact, I don't think any of us did. And we couldn't even until say the word poltergeist until Mr. Groves from the Psychical Research explained how to say poltergeist. That's me, that's me. <laughs> and, and, and also, what it actually meant in, was it German? Was it? Yeah, it, it, poltergeist, it, noisy, noisy, noisy ghost. Noisy spirit. In the meaning noisy of it thing, also, yeah. which he explained to us. What do you say to people who say to you, with you children playing around, what do you say well, about that? I say that's a matter of opinion. If you haven't experienced it, you're going to say that. But it did really happen. It upsets me deep down to think that they can't give us an open mind, the ones that just put it down completely. But all I can say to them is I wish they could experience the same thing as what we went through. They certainly wouldn't say it was false or a fake or it was child playing or, or anything of that kind. The welfare of people at the centre of poltergeist activity is very important. I believe that most poltergeist activity is actually caused by very high levels of stress. Occasionally, 
you get paranormal entities interacting with us. And this is what I think happened at Enfield. I haven't spent all my years searching for the paranormal. Like everybody else, I had a normal life to lead. When I left school, I was a commercial artist. I did two years apprenticeship. You can see on the pictures on the wall, well, actually, they are my pictures that I have done. I turned into quite a good commercial artist, in fact. But then the war was looming, and I joined the Royal Artillery. Super heavy guns. We had to make a hasty retreat back to Dunkirk, when, of course, thousands of other troops. And we were bombed and blitzed to hell there. It really was rough going. I suppose I was one of the reasonably lucky ones. I got off on a destroyer. I met Betty at a tea dance in Marble Arch. Oh, I was very taken with her, right from work go. And uh, it was on a Sunday, and I met her on a Sunday, proposed to her on the Thursday, and in 10 weeks we were married. Because everybody said at the time, oh, these war marriages, it would never last, it would never last. I don't know, perhaps it won't. I mean, it's only 51 years now, so I suppose. <laughs> I think I can say it, it lasts. Right. We've had a good life. A good life, that is, until the death of our youngest daughter, Janet, in a road accident. Betty and I believe that Janet tried to contact us after her physical death. You might believe that was just our way of dealing with bereavement, but it was a turning point in my life. I decided to carry out serious research into the paranormal and join the Society for Psychical Research. This is now my psychic HQ. The Society is the world's leading centre for the scientific study of the paranormal. I'm the chairman of the Spontaneous Phenomena Committee. People write to us from all around the country with their strange cases, which we investigate on a non-fee-paying basis. Can you recap on who he said was psychologically disturbed? He said what what that name of who was it? Because there's so many names. The covering came up. letter, isn't oh, it? Yes, on the covering yeah. letter. There's so many people mentioned. Yes, I was there. wondering that. Yes. I spoke to him in the early sixties and a retired university lecturer. Well, I think we can dispense with that case then, yes. Yeah. We had a letter from a woman in Watford. She claimed her clothes were being severely damaged and sometimes disappearing altogether. Shirley had submitted herself to psychiatric treatment, but there was no explanation. She now keeps her clothes in padlock cupboards. Only her husband has the keys. In desperation, she contacted our society. Hello, Shirley. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi. Hello. It's all right, thank you. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> oh, exciting. Hello. Hello. Go in. Hello. They're wonderful. They're wonderful dogs. They're very, very intelligent. Just let me show you. You know I'm making a video yeah. diary, Phil. You've no objection to us using some of this. We no. won't use much of it, but no. some of it you have. No objection at all, no. Right, OK, thank you. And here are the famous yes, uh, padlock wardrobe. wardrobe. Yeah. Padlocks on that one. This is mine with the stronger lock. And again, I'd only be can, touched these normally. You can't, can you unlock them? No, no, my husband's got the keys. There's only one set and he's got them with him. Have any... Uh, any shoes or clothes or anything disappeared from that yeah. one. Oh yeah. Whilst it's been padlocked yes. up oh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. In the last few months, I've had um, a shirt from there and a skirt. Sometimes I forget, and then I suddenly think, oh, I haven't seen that skirt or whatever. And from the bottom, I mean, my brown boots were actually in that wardrobe when they yeah, yes. the box. We actually found the carrier bag in the bottom of that wardrobe. Now, when you want anything out of there. You have to ask your husband yeah, to Yeah, well, if he isn't in, I leave him a note. I had to leave him a note actually last night to leave this skirt and sweater Well, that's out. dreadful. Yeah, really? And sometimes he goes out and I have to say, you know, I'll no, leave so, Excuse clothes. me laughing, but it no, seems to be it is. a it's ludicrous, a, it's situation. A ludicrous situation. I don't tell people, I don't send it to anybody. Yeah. Come on, dog, you're the one who's responsible, I'm sure. <laughs> you are responsible for it. Oh, look at your waggish tail. I wish he knew. <laughs> I if, that, if that dog could talk, he'd be able to tell me a lot of things. Yes, I'm sure he would. May, may I suggest to you that you stop all this padlocking business stop and get me. back to yes, and get back to a normal life, and if things still disappear, uh, 
you start to accept it and see then whether it starts to diminish. I think, you see, uh, I think what is happening is that, let, let's, let's assume that um, it is paranormal mm -hmm. activity. I mean, let me make the assumption it is paranormal activity. By having all these padlocks and bolts and, and sleeping in the spare room, mm -hmm. you are continuing a high stress situation. Now, if you're continuing this high stress situation, and if it is paranormal activity, mm -hmm. if it is um, teleportation, the movement of objects or whatever.